Hello friends and welcome to this new course. In this course we will talk about Flutter and database. Usually Flutter uses uh, MySQL or, or SQLite, but in this course we will talk about PostgreSQL and Flutter. And uh, down the road we will also talk about the security of the application, of the Android application or iOS application. We will use the Flutter platform. We will talk mainly about the backend and also the security a little bit but our focus will be on the back end we will talk briefly about the user interface we will create a simple uh, application just a few pages to perform our the creation of our database but we will not go deeper into the flutter user interface this uh, course consists of two parts part number one is to create a fully encrypted postgresql database server but i will not talk about this uh, part because it's already covered in my course postgresql 4 encrypted updated you can go there it's, i have updated it about two weeks ago so you can go and look it in there and then we will cover the second part the second part is is all the talk about the how to create a database and connect it to the server for any application android application or ios application now this part consists of two sections section number one is that we will go with the conventional way of creating a database and a connection we will create uh, the classes the widget classes of the app we will go with the conventional which is the module classes we will create the app the widgets and then we will create a model classes the model classes as you might know uh, it's a, it's a layer it's a, a layer between the application and the database and then the final thing we will create a, a connection between the application and the uh, server we will use this api the postgres the postgres api you can get uh, this api from uh, here from pub.dev and you could go to this Postgres as you can see here this Postgres is the one that I'm using actually I have tried uh, different APIs for connection creating a connection uh, between the application and the server but uh, this one I found it the most uh, comprehensive one the other ones like uh, for instance let's say PostgreSQL 2 or uh, other ones like PG pool or other ones uh, these are okay uh, APIs but for the most part they lack something I mean some of them they can insert and update but they don't delete and they don't have security some of them can only do insert some of them uh, don't have uh, a secure connection they don't add the security feature the SSL feature but this uh, API the Postgres uh, I have tried uh, to it and it is can do the insert update delete and also it has an SSL feature so it's almost uh, the best uh, API I have found in uh, the public day for creating a connection between any application and the server the PostgreSQL server now this is for the first section the second section we will do the same except that we will use the DIO API in this case the DIO API which is the same we will create the widgets we will use the same uh, Postgres API for creating the connection but instead of using models creating a model classes we will use the DIO DIO API and we will use the post and the get method if we have time then we will talk uh, more about this hopefully I will give you some brief about how you can use the DIO and if you need all the details about the DIO this is the details from where you could get uh, all the details about the DIO API from the github as well now as for the project we will use I will use the IntelliJ IDE I will use minimum SDK version 24 target SDK version 30 Flutter version 2.213 the SDK for Dart SDK is 2.13 and the Gradle 7.11 and JDK 11 this is the all the details about the project preferences so let's start by creating a new project Uh, I will not go through 
how you can add the flutter or the dart to a project this is totally up to you but now let's give our project a name let's say uh, flutter db and keep all these things as it is we don't need to change for now and then we will finish and now our project our new project is being created and is being initialized so this is how our new project will look like this is the tree of the project and we will talk about them okay so first of all to configure okay let's minimize this now as you can see here this directory the lib directory is where your entire structure of your application resides it has only one class or one dart file by the name of main now before you start doing anything or creating your application I highly advise you to do some settings pre settings that you really need because I found that if I don't do these things before I start developing any project I will get I will waste a lot of time why because I will face errors that I need to search about, that I need to look how to solve them, which will consume a lot of time and effort. So the things I used to is to do these basic settings. We'll start with this. The first one is the properties, the gradle properties. By default it is 6.7 comes at, as of now, as of this date of creating this project is 6.7 Gradle now the latest version of Gradle you could get from here from gradle.org which is 7.11 so you need to change to 7.11 this is the first thing the second thing is build Gradle in the build Gradle it comes with 4.18 4.18 the build Gradle tool the build Gradle tool 4.18 now the build gradle tool as of now it is 4.204 by the way this is a very important article i highly advise you to go through it, all of it so uh, the build gradle tool is as of today is 4.20 so let's change it make it 4.20 now let's go to the third thing build gradle now the build gradle here when you create a new project as of today you will get the minimum SDK version 16 there is one thing to notice that here with 4.2 there are security features which is uh, a very good features for the uh, securing your application these security features when you with this version requires requires from you a minimum SDK of 24 so if you do the 26 first of all you will get an error second these security features will not be implemented on your application so it's better to uh, upgrade your minimum SDK version and make it as 24 another thing which is the manifest For the manifest, whenever you package your production, the, the, the production version of your application, all the configuration of your application will resides in this file, the Android manifest XML.xml. By default, when you create a new project, you will find only this configuration. This configuration tells you that this application has one permission, which is to connect to the internet down the road, down the road when you start making the application we will add more and more configuration to this file so, but this is the main look this is how 
it looks like this file looks like whenever you create a new project only one line which is a permission to connect to the internet there is another thing uh, when you start the application you will get an error saying that this android xml file does not exist does not exist now the way to solve it is that you go to the project structure you need to do few things first of all first of all you need to add the SDK which in this case I'm using API 30 in my case I'm using version 11 of uh, JDK 11 okay then we go to the modules the dependencies everything looks fine so far the facets on the facets here as you can see here because of this you will get an error telling you that this file does not exist although it does exist in your project uh, tree but you will get that error so the way to solve it is that click in here go to your project go to your Android app source debug and then add it in here here you, once you have done this that error telling you that there is no manifest XML file will go now let's see some other things I advise you to get rid of the Kotlin as for the Flutter API you need to add it wherever it's your Flutter Okay, now we have added all the flutter. And as for the SDK, we have the SDK 30 with GDK 11. Okay, now seems everything is okay with our project. all is okay now so apply and okay okay now these are the basic settings that you need to do prior to start developing your project these settings will save you a lot of time searching for solutions for the error that you will face if you haven't done these settings now once you have done this now there are a few other things we need to do we need to add to add a few more directories in here to our project the first one we will create in the lib directory we need to create a new directory by the name of database and then we create another one by the name of models and the last one which will be the widgets the widgets of course is the user interface uh, design of our application and there is another directory by the name of you could give it whichever name suitable by the name of resources resource this uh, directory you will keep in it you will save in it all the things that you will use uh, for your application such as the images or the videos you will keep in this directory now uh, the next thing we need to do is the popspec.yaml file in this as you might know we will 
add all the packages that we will use to develop our project one of them of course is the PostgreSQL is the Postgres which is the installing so let's say we have a database and then we need to add three more that we gonna need which is the first one is the DIO and the HTTP and the HTML the DIO is this one Now make sure that the indentation is correct otherwise this file will not work and your accordingly your application will not work the second one is the HTTP And the last one is the HTML. Okay, now we have got our dependencies that we need for our project. We just have to pop.get so we can get these packages and add them to our project the last thing we need to do is that we need to add this directory into our assets into our assets so we go here to this assets and then we do like this resource slash that's it now once you have done this your project is ready to start doing any uh, development you just pop dot get again and do the upgrade now make sure that the indentation here is correct otherwise as i said uh, uh, your your uh, uh, application will not work this file will not work and accordingly your application will not work so this by doing this we have finished all the pre-settings that we need to uh, do so we can have a very smooth uh, development for our application now in the next video we will start the real work we will go through the implementation of creating a flutter user interface a basic one and then we will see how we can uh, create a database for that application thank you very much